I want you to pay attention to my right hand and see how I'm resting it on the strings right in front of the bridge. Almost like I'm just being lazy and just letting my hand fall here. And I can be a little off those strings. The, the, they're totally dead. slightly dampened, totally dead, depending on where I need to put my hand to be able to play what I'm playing and to do that dance between left and right hand to pull off uh, whatever muting that I need. There's lots of little pieces and parts to what I play that I string together. So, So from that turnaround, you've got your B7, 1, 2, 3, 4, to A7, 1, 2, 3, 4. Walk up to your B7 chord and strum up, down. So you don't have to make these staccato or bop, bop, bop. You can 1, 2, one, two, three, four. Here I'm just walking up to the B7, up strum, down strum. Now let's look at this little walk up. Again, I'm holding on for a reference point with my pinky and my ring finger to this first string down here. One, two, three. Slide up a fret. One, two, three. One, two, three. And you just want to loop that around. So it's 12 bar blues, four beats in each measure, one, two, three, four. But I'm actually hitting one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all right? So one, two, three, four, as far as the beats to a measure, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four.
12 bar blues has one of two things that happens in the first four measures. Either it stays on the E or the one chord, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. If I play a major scale, instead of saying do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, and say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. There's my one, there's my four, which is the A, and my five is the B. One, two, three, four, A, five, B. So this is a one, four, five progression. E, A, and B. But I'm going to make them all dominant sevenths. Four. Because that's the blues sound. They use a lot. The blues style of music uses a lot of dominant seventh chords. That's kind of its flavor. You have different chord flavors for different types of music. Now you'll see dominant seventh chords show up everywhere. But blues is really kind of built on that sound. Either the one chord happens all four measures, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, and then on through the rest of the progression, the exact same, or in that first four bars, it goes from the one chord to the four chord, back to the one chord, which is what happens in Ramblin'. One, two, three, four to A or the fourth chord, two, three, four back to E twice, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then on to the rest of the song. So if it has what this song has, a quick four, if you were to sit in with a band and they were, okay, 12 bar blues, what key is it in? This is in the key of E. Does it have a quick four or not? So is it going to go right to that four chord on the second measure, or is it just going to stay on the one chord? Those would be two things you'd want to be aware of. Being able to see this, um, and then where my hand is down here, and you can Just move around until you get just as much of the the sound ringing through as you want. If you're on an electric guitar and you've got an amp turned up with a little bit of distortion, for one, you'd probably want to turn the volume on your guitar down to clean up that sound a little bit. And then you don't want, you know, strings ringing open, you know, because on an electric guitar, if the volume's turned up and you just don't touch anything, it makes noise because the strings vibrate. So you always want to use the palm of your hand to dampen as needed, from electric to acoustic to, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. This muting down here really makes, uh, you, it allows you to be musical and not just have a bunch of unwanted noise. Also dynamic. <clears throat> So B7 up, and then notice how I'm muting here, and I'm taking my strings off the neck of the guitar. My fingers are staying on the strings. I'm going to play it free form. I'll add a few things to it.
E minor pentatonic. Basic. Expanded. There's my E. If I expand it. Then I have my E root six basic and expanded. So the intro to the song that I play, I've had a lot of people ask me how I do that. So the intro goes like this. things I want to point out. One, using my first and second fingers, it's right from my E minor pentatonic, root five, basic form. My first finger stays planted. My second finger bends up. And I'm playing both strings at the same time with my middle finger and ring finger. I could play... I like the, the the control that I have. And I could by using my middle finger, I get all of the texture and nuance and dynamic uh Now, I'm holding on to this and I'm leveraging. I'm not really pushing up, I'm, I'm moving my hand. And then... This is my E minor pentatonic root six. This would be the basic form, or I can expand it up. Here I'm playing these two strings. I'm just taking an E7 chord, moving it up one fret at a time, like in the turnaround. But for the intro, I play those two strings together. So. See how, the, how I tied that together, wove it together, I like to call it gluing it together. subtle not so much something to practice but something to kind of allow it to happen start thinking of gluing things together once you have them down okay now notice I've switched to Just playing these two notes. I mean, sometimes I'll da -da -na 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 with my ring finger or or that's 
not something you're going to want to do in the learning phase. This would be, quote, proper, but you want to be able to do this, and this is the foundation. If you want to break away from that here and there, notice that, like, when I start playing something, I got it around, then. Well, I got it rambling on my mind. Sometimes there's very little I'm playing. I, I almost drop all the way out. I never stop playing. So there's a lot of levels that once you really get the framework of something down, you can add to it. You can drop some things off, simplify. Um, you know, there's, there's an, an infinite number of ways that you can play this, but get the foundation down and, uh, learn the pieces and parts of your pentatonics, this intro and how to play it properly and then have fun. Okay. Well, have fun the whole time. All right.